somebody. It don't get no easier standing behind this pulpit, y'all. If your health is loud, I ask that you'll stand for the reading of God's Word. Colossians chapter 3, verse 10 says, And have put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge, after the image of him that created him, where there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcision nor uncircumcision, barbarian, Scythian, bound nor free, but Christ is all and in all. Put on, therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, bowels of mercy, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long-suffering, forbearing one another and forgiving one another. If any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. And above, and above all these things, put on charity, which is the bond of perfectness. And let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to thee which also ye are called in one body, and be ye thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another, in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. And whatsoever ye do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by him. Let's bow our heads. Heavenly Father, we've read your word, and we just want to say thank you for what you have to say to us. Father, I ask that you will move me behind your cross, and you speak. You take charge of this message. Father, I just thank you for the opportunity that you gave me to stand for you. And I just want to do what your will is. I thank you for that love, grace, and mercy that you give me each and every day, Lord. I just want to praise your name right now and stand boldly for you. I thank you, I love you, and it's in your heavenly name that we pray. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. <sighs> Paul wrote Colossians. Um, and in the beginning of chapter 3, with the brotherhood, we talked about seeking the things that are above. We need to focus on God. That's what we need to focus on. We need to focus on the earthly things. Set your mind and your eyes on the prize above. Last week, Pastor Avery talked about salvation. And in that, he talked about having the peace of God. Today, I want to talk about when you receive salvation, God makes you a new man, a new person. Right. Okay? And verse 10 says, And have put on the new man which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. The new man. When you, when you ask the Lord to save your soul, you change. You change. Your heart changes. Your mind changes. You get all these wonderful gifts that you, we'll see here in just a few minutes that God gives you. Salvation is awesome, y'all. And if anybody doesn't know the Lord is their personal Savior, I'm telling you today is your day because you will get a peace from God that is unreal. It's un... You can't match it to anything. You can't compare it to anything. Nothing compares to the peace of God, that love that God gives you. Put on the new man which is renewed in knowledge. When God saves you, the old ways that are over here you forget about them. That knowledge is gone of the bad stuff we've done. Salvation, you come over here and you have peace, love, happiness. You have all these wonderful things that God gives you. So put on that new man renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. In the image of God that created Jesus. It's the only way. It's the only way, y'all. It's God's way. Get renewed in knowledge. His knowledge. Right here is His knowledge. Each and every one of us have a Bible. Get your knowledge. God gives it to you freely. It don't cost you a thing. It don't cost you a thing. Verse 11. Where there is neither Greek nor Jew nor uncircumcision, barbarian, Scythian, bound nor free... But Christ is all and in all. 
when we're renewed in God, we should have no hate. There should be no difference. There's no difference between me and Ronnie. We're the same. When we go to heaven, we're all the same. There's no color. There's no hate. There's no division. Everybody's on the same page. Everybody loves God and wants to serve God. And that's what we got to do. That's what it's about. It's about serving the Lord and getting the knowledge that we need and quit with this division. Quit with this hate. If we will love more, we will gain more. Amen. When we hate, then we just might as well be just saying, go ahead and take us on out of here, Lord. We're done. We can't do it without God. We need God. We need His love, His grace, and His mercy. It goes on and says, But Christ is all and in all. So when we go to heaven, Christ is in all of us. He dwells with us. Amen. We're living in His land. We're living in glory. Y'all, we're not living here on earth anymore. We're living with God and Jesus. Jesus who sits to the right hand of God. Man, I don't know about y'all, but when that day comes, I look forward to it. Because I know that I know that I know where I'm going. And I hope you know. Put on, therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved. I'm going to stop right here. Therefore. Y'all have heard preacher Chris say it before. Therefore, it's there for a reason. The reason, therefore, is here this time is because it says, as the elect of God. Elect is chosen. You are chosen of God. Holy and beloved. Bowels of mercy, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, and long suffering. See, these are things that God gives you freely when you ask for your salvation. When you ask the Lord into your heart, you get these things. And they're, they're just great. You can't describe these things without just saying the name Jesus. Jesus died for us so that we could be chosen of God, that we could be holy, beloved, have bowels of mercy. Mercy, y'all. Show mercy, kindness, humbleness to each other. That's what we lack right now is we lack humbleness in ourselves. We're too consumed by the world. Find humbleness and you'll find some peace. Meekness and long-suffering. I am so shaking, y'all. The word long-suffering is something that I know some of us might have, but the majority of us don't, and that's patience. God gives it to us. We just don't know how to use it. Find a way to use it. How do I find it? Right here. Right here. God give it to you. You just got to open your mind up to it. And believe. Believe. When the Holy Spirit sits in your heart, you change and you get these, these gifts of a new man that God gives you. I struggle with long suffering. I struggle with patience. Sometimes I think I'm good, but I'm not. My patience isn't good. I need to go to God each and every day and ask for Him to get, gently guide me. I don't want to ask for patience. I don't want to ask for patience because I don't, I'm, who knows where I'll be. But I want the peace of God to be with me and I want God to give me my patience. Not Eric. Eric will get in the way of everything each and every time. But God don't get in the way. God is the way, the only way. Come on now. Forbearing one another and forgiving one another. Forbearing is to endure. Endure is suffering. Suffer with one another. Don't be scared to cry with your brother or your sister. 
They need you. And there's going to come a time and a place where you need them. We need each other. We need to be there for each other. Forbearing one another. Suffering with one another. Showing each other love and mercy. And not just that. Forgiving one another. Forgiving is giving grace. Give your brother grace and mercy. If any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. Now, I know I'm talking to myself. It's hard to forgive people when you've been hurt. It's, been, it's hard. It's so hard. But I don't know exactly where, but we're supposed to forgive each other 70 times 7. Each and every... I'm, I'm going to say each and every day, each and every minute. Forgive. When you walk around with that hate, that uneasy feeling where you're bitter with somebody, your day's terrible. It's miserable. There's no good in it. But when that individual might make you mad or upset you, help them, Lord. I forgive them, Lord, for what they've done. See how your day is then. See what comes about then. There is nothing better than forgiving somebody. There is nothing better. He's like, Eric, you're crazy. No, I'm not. It's, it's facts. Forgiving gives peace. There is a peace that will come over your heart just by saying, I forgive you, brother. And then you get to go on your merry way that day and just smile and praise God all day long. Christ forgave you. Right? Christ forgave y'all. Christ forgave y'all. So also do ye. It says it right here in the scripture. It says, forgive. Now, now these next two verses are, are just beautiful. I, I love these, these two verses. And, ab and above all things put on charity which is the bond of perfectness. While I was studying this, I was like, charity. What's charity? Charity is love. Charity is love. And it says right here, and above all things, put on charity, which is the bond of perfectness. I don't know. That's, that's pretty self-explanatory to me. We need to love each other. Show compassion for each other. Do what we can to help each other. Go out of the way. Go out of the way to help somebody. You don't know what kind of blessing that you might give them or somebody else. And in God's eyes, it's a bond of perfectness. What's more perfect than God? God is love, right? God is love. And it's the bond of perfectness. God's love in us is perfect. Now, our love in God probably ain't perfect because we're humans. Set your thoughts on love each and every day. Showing love, showing mercy, showing grace, forgiving and forgetting. Show these things because God gave them to you freely. Freely. After you, after you ask the Lord into your heart, He's given you these things that you get to take with you each and every day and apply them to your life somehow, some way. No, it's not easy. But with God's help, it's possible. With, with y'all doing it yourselves, you'll get in the way. Give it to God. Let God handle it. Let God show you that love so you can show love to your neighbor or your friend, or your enemy. Your enemy needs your love too. You got to forgive your enemy and love him. It's hard to do, absolutely. But with God, all things are possible. Amen. Verse 15 goes on and says, And let the peace of God rule in your hearts, 
to thee which also ye are called in one body. Let the peace of God rule in your heart. I'm going to brag on the Lord for just a minute. This morning I've, I've shaked in my shoes. I've cried a couple times. And each time I've had a couple people pray with me. And I've had a couple other people say this. Give him peace, God. Give him a peace and understanding. What more can I say? When you let that peace of God rule in your heart, how can you not smile? I'm happy right now. Yeah, I'm shaking in my shoes, but I got God on my side. He is the peace that lives in my heart, not out here. He lives right here, and I take him with me each and every day. No, I'm not perfect, but I got God on my side, and he gives me the peace and comfort that I need each and every day. Each and every day. Not just the peace. It tells you that we are called in one body. We've asked God to live in our heart. So we're living in one body with Christ. We need to do the things that are of God, with God. Let Him dwell inside of you. I believe in my heart. That's what He's saying where you are called in one body, and be thankful. When God lives in my heart, before I didn't understand that peace, August 1st would be two years of my salvation, and I'm proud to say that, because before I had no peace, and I wasn't in one body with God. When I got my salvation, I got that peace of God instantaneously. Instantaneously. It didn't take five minutes, 20 minutes, an hour, a day, two days. It happened right then and there just as soon as I said, I confess my sins. Bam, there it is. Right there it is. Brothers and sisters, I'm telling you right now, if you want peace, if you don't know the Lord as your Savior and you want peace, I encourage you to fall on your face, confess your sins to God, and I promise He will deliver the peace that you need. It's a rule. I want to tell y'all what rule is real quick. It's to govern. Let God govern your heart. Let him live there. Verse 16 says, Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs with grace in your hearts to the Lord. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. The word richly, when I looked it up, let God dwell in you abundantly. Abundantly, a lot. Let God live in your heart more than what you did before you come to know the Lord. There, that stuff that you did before is forgotten. It's gone. But that salvation... That peace, and when Christ comes into your heart, you can't help but let him dwell richly in your heart. You can't help it. It's a contagious smile. It is a contagious smile, y'all. There's nothing greater than the Lord living in your heart. I love it. I love having God live in my heart and the things that he's brought me through, the trials that he's put me in to make me a better person. I fail each and every day, y'all. Each and every day I fail, fail somehow, some way. But through God's grace, His mercy, His love, and His peace, I get peace too. I get all these wonderful things that He gives me so freely. In teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace, in your heart to the Lord. There's nothing better than up here singing in the choir. I wouldn't have known that if dear Mr. Lloyd wouldn't have looked at me and said, come on, brother. I didn't, I didn't want to sing. I can't sing. 
but we're making God happy when we sing. We don't have to be perfect. We don't have to sound like the singers out here with beautiful voices. No. All we need to do is just be us, which is what God wants us to be, in Him, in one body, in one body, singing psalms and hymns with our brothers and sisters to Him and giving Him thanks and giving glory to God for these wonderful gifts that He's given us. Without God, are we able to talk? Are we able to sing? Are we able to see? It's God's will that we have these things. Singing with grace in your hearts. The word grace was thanks. With thanks in your heart to the Lord. When we sing, when y'all sing, sing it with grace. Sing it with thanks in your heart. You let your heart pour out to God. Give it to Him. Give it to Him. Shout it. We're not, we're not singers. We're children of God, and we're here to praise God, honor God, love God, be thankful. And whatsoever ye do in word or deed, do all in the name of God. Of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by Him. When y'all leave today, y'all take a word that y'all got, something you may have received last week, the week before, whenever it was. You take this and you spread it out. You take it outside these four walls and you show other people who don't know Christ what it's like to live for God, what it's like to have Him in your heart, what it's like to have His peace. And you just might see a change in somebody. It might just be a blessing that you couldn't expect. Do it. Do it all in the name of God. Don't do it in the name of Eric or the name of Charlie or Michael or Chris or whatever your name may be. Do it for God the Father. Do it for Him. No, you're not perfect. None of us are. But with God's help, with God's help, we can do it all in His name. We can do it all in His name. I want y'all to, if, if, If there's nothing you take today, just take verse 15 with you. And I'm going to read it again. I like to dwell on things, and I want to dwell on this. And let the peace of God rule in your heart. You might leave today, pull out, make a left, go half a mile down the road, somebody pull out in front of you, and you just lost it. Don't lose it. Let the peace of God be in your heart. Let the peace of God rule your heart. Live in your heart. Live in your heart abundantly. There is nothing greater than the peace of God. The love of God is awesome too. I'm not, I don't want to compare the two because both of them are great. But for us, we need peace. In my, this is Eric's opinion. We need peace. With peace, we can find love. With peace, we can find a way to forgive our brother or our sister. Find that peace, and you will find something so much more better than the worldly things. At this time, I'm going to ask Miss Elaine if she'll prepare us a hymn invitation as we get ready to open up this altar. I ask y'all to remember that again. I do dwell, and I'm dwelling on the peace of God in your heart. Take it with you today, tomorrow, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, this month, next month. Take it with you each and every day. Give it to God. Give it to God. And I bet you uh, anything in the world, He'll be right there to help you. Might not be today, but He'll be there to help you, I promise. Will you please stand? The altar is open for anybody who wants to come.